Can network tweaks improve the sound of your stereo? Or are they just a joke? A joke at the expense of your wallet? Welcome everyone. Today I'm talking about Ethernet networks, which of course feed data into your streamer. Can the quality of your network have an impact on the sound of your system and is there anything you can do about it? To be honest, this seems like a category of products that shouldn't exist. I don't think there's any benefit to be had. More likely, it's audiophiles yearning for that final ounce of performance, thinking there must be something that they can do to make every piece of the chain work better. So today, I wanted to investigate that a little bit further. Data on the internet and on your local network uses a protocol called TCP IP. That stands for Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol, TCP slash IP. And by its very nature, it is self-healing which means when it sends a packet, it makes sure that the packet is properly transmitted. If it wasn't, it automatically asks it to be retransmitted. Data could be sent as many, many smaller packets and then is automatically combined together to create the actual data that was sent. The system knows when it's wrong and it resends it automatically. So with a system like this, how could it possibly be that your network data is wrong? But interestingly enough, USB is somewhat similar. It's also asynchronous, like TCP IP, and it's self-healing. It recognizes when information is sent incorrectly. They can both send data far faster than you would ever need for music. Yet, I've already learned that USB and the quality of that coming through can actually have an impact in the signal. Now, in the case of USB, I think it's more to do with noise on the ground plane, noise in the power, it's the line that's signaling that there's a USB connection there. Could something similar be happening on the Ethernet side? This isn't the first time that there was a product category created where we didn't think there was one necessary before. CD players used to be good enough at taking the data off of the disk and transferring it through to an analog signal to feed into your amplifier. But of course now we have digital to audio converters. We didn't think that that was necessary and now we understand that you can get a benefit in terms of choosing a DAC that suits your own tastes. Should a DAC be invisible and transparent? I suppose, but every DAC that I've listened to does sound different. So it just gives us this opportunity to find one that makes us happiest. In the same situation, from digital in a transport or a streamer through to a digital to analog converter should be fine. And then I heard about digital to digital converters and discovered that they can actually help as well, especially for things like USB. But I don't know until I can try this. I'm skeptical, but I've got an open mind. And I thought, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Some of you may be thinking, well, if it's noise coming through from your Ethernet connection, why don't you just use Wi-Fi? Then you don't get any electrical noise coming in from the cable. Well, it's true, it eliminates that one kind of noise, but I don't know if you've ever tried using Wi-Fi for streaming, but in my experience, it's caused no end of grief. Wi-Fi tends to be very flaky. It drops out a lot. I get problems with buffering. If my microwave is on, I can't listen to music. Ultimately, I have decided that it's much more important for me to actually have a wired connection, so I have to deal with that. So we're going to discard the issue of Wi-Fi for the time being. This will definitely focus on the Ethernet side. There are many different products available, and they try to address different parts of the chain. Many of these are rather expensive, and I'm not ready to invest a bunch of money on something that potentially couldn't help at all. But there are some cheaper options available. In my case, I'm trying two today. The first is an Ethernet filter, and the second is a media converter that takes the copper Ethernet over to fiber optic and back to copper Ethernet. 
In both cases, these products are worth less than $100. So I think it's a worthwhile investment and very little risk to see if it actually does help. If it turns out that there's a benefit, then I might consider spending more money later to get something even better. And of course, if I don't hear any benefit from either of these products, then I can consider the conversation done from my perspective. I'm certainly not going to spend a lot of extra money on something that's promised when I couldn't even see a glimmer of that from a cheaper product. Thanks to everybody who watched my prior videos. And if you're enjoying this one, please hit the like button. And if you want to keep seeing more from me, I encourage you to subscribe. You may be using a streaming service like Spotify, CoBuzz, or Tidal, in which case your data is coming from the internet through some kind of an internet router into your system and potentially into a switch, and then from that switch into your streamer itself. If you have local files that you're running, in that case, you'll have a media server of some type, a file server with FLAC files or whatever you happen to have, from that to a switch and again to your streamer, and then finally out to your DAC and the rest of your system. As I mentioned earlier, there are many places in your network that you could potentially try to improve. The first that comes to mind is cables. And I'm not going to talk about cables today, again, because the system is self-healing from a data perspective. I don't know that you would get a massive benefit from trying a different cable, but certainly, if you want to try different cables, go ahead. In my case, I'm using fairly straightforward, inexpensive cables to do all of my testing. The next category is filtering. If you do, in fact, have noise on that Ethernet cable, and it's somehow getting through to your streamer and having an impact, perhaps you could filter it out. There are a bunch of different products that are available that cover that particular purpose. One of the more expensive options I found in the filter department was a Network Acoustics Eno 2. The cost of that is as much as $1,900, depending upon the options that you want. And personally, I wasn't interested in spending that much money just for the sake of this test. The product that I did choose to use is the iFi LAN iSilencer. That was just $90. And I figured if you can buy it from Amazon, give it a try and return it if you don't like it, $90 is a very easy risk to take. The next category is switches. Rather than just using a normal $20 switch, you could go for something like the SOTM or SOTM, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, uh, SNH10G. This network switch is $850. It has all sorts of different options to try and improve the situation. And again, more money than I wanted to spend. Another option is the Ether Regen. It's $700. You can even plug an external clock onto this particular switch to try and improve things further. There's also the LHY SW8, which is $595. Again, more than I want to spend. For a little bit less money, at $530, is the Gustard N18 Pro. The next category of tweak I call fiber optic isolation. In this case, you're going from Ethernet twisted pair, which is copper, through a media converter, into fiber optic, into another media converter, and back to copper twisted pair. And in doing so, you get galvanic isolation between those two points, and each of those media converters is retransmitting the signal, and in doing so, potentially reducing the amount of noise that's on the system. I looked at this and thought this is the best opportunity that it would actually be able to make an improvement in my network situation. There are a number of devices you can purchase which do all of that within one box, where you just plug in two Ethernet cables and the fiber optic magic is inside. The FAO1 at $500 is one example of this, and the iFi LAN Purifier Pro at $300 is another. Rather than buy an expensive all-in-one unit, I decided to roll my own. I would need two media converters and the associated hardware and adapters, and a chunk of fiber optic cable. A media converter has two ports on it. One is usually an RJ45 for your regular Ethernet cable. The other is called an SFP port, and you require a special adapter, depending upon what kind of cable you plan to hook up to it. In this case, I'm planning on hooking up fiber optic. 
And there can be many options depending upon the SFP converters. And those vary as well based upon the manufacturer. Then I discovered that I could get a package from a company called BD on Amazon. And I'll put a link to all these things below. And this one package had two media converters plus the necessary SFP adapters. All I needed was a piece of fiber optic cable that would plug into those particular adapters. So the total cost for this was just $70. Before I get into the results of my listening, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the setup. In my case, my network is rather complicated. I've got not only the internet router, but I have numerous switches, probably at least six in my house. Plus I have a Mocha network with three or four adapters. I've got two Wi-Fi hubs and four mesh hubs. And of course, numerous cables all through the house. So really my network should be bad. It should be a almost worst case scenario. So I really did have hope that I would hear something, but again, I didn't really expect it due to the nature of TCP IP. First up was the iFi LAN iSilencer. This is an ethernet filter that I plugged directly into the Mercury streamer. And then I plugged the cable into that. So it's now in line with the cable. I went back and forth a whole bunch of times. I tried it on a couple of different days. And I even tried then putting it into a different system that I thought perhaps this one is not as good as the other one. And in all cases, I heard no difference, none whatsoever. So either I don't have a problem, which is what I suspected, or this particular device did not solve the particular problem that I have. All I know is I didn't hear any appreciable difference with the device in or not in line. It didn't make anything worse, but it didn't seem to make anything better. Next up, we had the BIDI media converters. In this case, again, I went back and forth, listened a bunch of times, tried it on a couple of different periods just to see if it was maybe my brain perceiving things the way it was, you know, both at night and in the morning. And I was actually surprised that there was a difference and it was a positive one. So what were those differences? I would say that instruments seemed just a bit more natural, a bit more full and easy sounding. There was a bit more shimmer to the highs. I just found that it's almost like there was a, an increased sense of brilliance to everything. There was also an increased sense of separation between the notes. I found that uh, delineation between elements was better. There was a bit more three-dimensionality to the sound stage. It just seemed a little more open. So how much difference was there? It's a good question. And I would say it was probably comparable to the differences that I've heard when comparing other digital components. Probably not as much as I can hear from one DAC to another, but definitely comparable to what I would hear from one DDC to another. And the kinds of benefits that I get are comparable to the benefits that I've heard from DDCs. It's worth pointing out that I did have a DDC in line already in this particular setup. So what I heard in terms of benefits were on top of what the Denifrips Gaia was already giving me. So this was a, as I say, a big surprise. I did not expect there to be a difference and I heard it. I went back and checked it a bunch of times, switching back and forth. And in all cases, it was clear to me. And I'm not the kind of person that wants to be convinced that these are there. Again, I approached this not expecting any difference. In fact, I was almost adamant that no difference could exist. But again, I try to keep an open mind. So I saw no difference with the filter, but definitely saw a difference with the media converters and the fiber optic insertion. Now, what should you take away from this? My network is not your network. My system is not your system and my ears certainly are not your ears. The benefit here is that the tweaks that I've tested are so inexpensive and the risk is so low 
that if you're at all curious to see if you can tell the difference in your own system, I urge you to go out and give it a shot, just for the fun of it. If you don't hear a difference, you can always return them. Thanks for watching the video and sticking out to the very end. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions, feel free to put them in the comments section below. I read all of them and where appropriate, I respond as well as I can. And of course, all the stuff that I've discussed today, I will have links for down in the description below. Thanks very much and have yourself a great day.